Okay, let's look at, again, at the big three closers of the jaw and their role in jaw function. I think the first thing to look at, again, is the difficulty that these muscles have just because of the architecture of the joint. What's interesting about this joint is that the, this, the, the TM joint is a weight suspending joint rather than a weight bearing joint. A weight suspending joint, much like the shoulder, is has a whole different set of constraints for the muscles that surround it. The muscles become both a supportive, they play a supportive role, and they also play a role in movement. So, for instance, in the shoulder, the supraspinatus is, is supposed to move you, but at the same time, it actually helps hold the humerus in place and stabilizes the glenohumeral joint. In many ways, the big three closures of the jaw, the mandible, the medial pterygoid, and the temporalis, have the same difficulty in that <clears throat> if they relaxed completely, the jaw would be held wide open, which is not functional. At the same time, if they have too much tension, if they're hypertonic, then the jaw is held completely closed. And, and we notice that in that you're sitting listening to a lecture, or you're doing something, and you notice that your teeth are completely clenched. Your teeth should be open just about two to three millimeters. That's called freeway space. So, but that necessitates just a little bit of muscle disengagement. So what you're saying to these three muscles are, I want you to relax, but not too much. So the question is, where is that line? And, and again, when it's on, it's not a problem. When it gets a little off track, then it becomes a real problem, and the muscle is uh, usually just, it's hypertonic. So again, Part of that's set up by just the architecture of the joint itself. It gets even worse because with the jaw, um, you have a bilateral joint. Nowhere in the body is anything like that. So that in this process of opening and closing, what we talked about earlier where you have hinge motion followed by translation, and if you remember from the CD you saw, translation is an enormously complex action. Not only is it complex, but it has to happen on two sides of the body at the same time. So you have a symphony of muscles all firing at precise ordering times, and that has to happen on two sides of the body exactly at the same time. And therein lies a lot of uh, potential mischief, because if one thing gets out of balance, if one muscle decides to be too tight or is restrictive, then it throws the whole system out of whack. And nothing that happens on the right side of the mandible, um, nothing that happens on one side cannot affect the opposite side. So anytime somebody's thrown out of balance, it throws the whole system out of whack. So again, th that's why we're going over the anatomy so carefully here, because you have to understand the role that each one of these muscles is playing in opening and closing in lateral trusion movements of the mandible, in protrusion and retrusion. You have to understand the dynamics, because once you understand the dynamics, then you have a better chance of actually using that knowledge in a clinical setting to be able to correct the dysfunctions that this person has, whether it's pure inner incisal opening or restricted lateral trusion movements or whatever their, their um, range of motion restrictions are but it could be much more than just range of motion restrictions because each one of these muscles also has specific pain patterns that go with it. The, if we pick one, the temporalis, for instance, can fire into individual teeth, making you think that uh, the tooth is the problem and the tooth will be sensitive. And it'll feel, there are many people who've had a root canal only to discover later that it was never the nerve root, it was actually a referral from the temporalis. You press on the trigger point and they feel it in exactly the same tooth that's been hypersensitive. So each muscle has a pain pattern, each has ways of restricting movement patterns in the mandible itself, and all of that is what we're going to go over in the next, uh, the next hour or so. So stay tuned, it's going to be a lot of fun.